Okay, the next topic is continuous random variables. We will look at the characteristics and examples first and then we'll talk about expected value and variance. I do want to say if you've never seen the topic of continuous random variables, I would recommend uh, spending some time on this, maybe either through Khan Academy or looking through these slides uh, and uh, the video multiple times because this is a topic uh, from my experience I've seen that students find this uh, extremely hard. So let's see how this goes, okay. So a continuous random variable x, okay, so I'm going to change my color back to blue. Uh, so a continuous random variable x is typically characterized by what's called CDF, the cumulative distribution function. Why do we need something like this? Because earlier we had used the probability mass function, but here the mass is zero for all values of little x, so therefore the probability mass function is meaningless. So therefore we look at something like the probability I'm sorry, the cumulative distribution function, the CDF, okay? So the CDF is defined for all values of x between negative infinite and infinite. Now, there's another parameter called the PDF, the probability density function, PDF, which is nothing but the derivative of the CDF with respect to x, okay? Now, whenever we model, in fact, we will see this uh, continuous random variables a lot in this course. The reason for that is because most physical quantities like time, distance, temperature, you can think of almost any other thing with a unit is usually modeled as a continuous random variable. A discrete random variable usually are things that are number, the number of people who are waiting in a queue, the number of uh, uh, you know, uh, vehicles that are produced in a factory and so on. However, if it's a physical quantity like what is the, how much, how much time does it take? For example, how much time is this uh, lecture going to take? Okay, that's A continuous random variable, although we do discretize it because we're going to be measuring in terms of second, we discretize, but typically things like time and distance and uh, temperature and so on are usually modeled as continuous random variables. Now, that's what like I was saying a little while ago, even some discrete quantities that, you know, uh, that are typically obviously discrete are sometimes for convenience modeled as continuous. You may wonder why would anybody want to do that? Continuous is much harder. Well, it turns out that a lot of times, you know, unless you have very, very special functions, the, uh, the summation signs don't work out as nicely as the integral. In fact, the integrals work out beautifully in many of these examples. So let's look at uh, some of those. So before we do that, I want to give you some names of some special continuous distributions. One is the normal distribution. You've all probably heard of the normal distribution. We will go to uh, talk about it in some detail. We will also talk about the exponential distribution in some detail. We will not talk about the uniform distribution. However, we have already said a little bit about it. This is the random variable that we generated using the calculator between 0 and 1. That's the uniform distribution between 0 and 1. We will not talk about the gamma distribution much except in an example. And beta distribution is, comes in two flavors. We will see one flavor in this topic and another flavor in a, in a different topic, okay? Uh, we, when you get there, I'll say a little bit more about it. There are many, many other distributions like chi-square, T distribution, uh, log normal distribution, uh, and so on. The list goes on and on and on. For all those distributions, I've, I'm able to write down the little f of x. This is the probability density function. The reason I don't want to define something in terms of the PDF is that it's not easy for us to uh, write it, write down a meaning for it. So it's easier to write down the meaning of the CDF, the cumulative den uh, distribution function, which we can write down as a probability that the random variable is less than or equal to a value x. Okay. Now, the CDF is not available for all random variables. In fact, for the normal and the gamma distribution in general, it's not possible to write down the cumulative distribution function. So we will have to leave them as an integral. So if you think about it, the cumulative distribution function is just the integral from negative infinite to x, little f of u du, because it is the area to the left of x, okay? So we will look at an example and I'll make that a little bit more clear. Now there are two properties that are important and I want to emphasize that, so I'm changing colors. These two are crucial properties. The first property is that this probability density function is always a number that is greater than or equal to zero for every value of x. And secondly, the CDF, 
f of x is non-decreasing and continuous. Okay, these these are very important properties, and the area under the f of x curve is one, and uh, that means the uh, value of um, the CDF at infinite equals one. Okay, so so that's the same thing. So we will when we look at an example, this will become a little bit more obvious. Okay. Now let's look at this very special distribution called the exponential distribution. The exponential distribution is a very popular one in the field of operations research. A lot of us uh, usually deal with the exponential distribution. So, uh, uh, so this is one of the two special distributions that we'll see uh, in this course. So a continuous random variable x is called exponential. So that's an important word with mean beta. So or beta. Uh, so sometimes uh, the parameter of the exponential is written differently, such as one over uh, the mean. Uh, for this course alone, I'm choosing to use the mean itself as the parameter, because most software, including Octave that we will see and R and so on, use the mean as a parameter. So we're going to go ahead and use that. Now the CDF looks like so. So if you plot a graph of the CDF versus X. Is how it looks like. It's, and I'm going to use change my color so that it's clear what the CDF. The CDF, the CDF is at zero, continuous. And then it moves over and goes towards one. So this is my f of x versus x. So f of x increases and hits one. Okay, asymptotically. Now. The expression for that is given as here. So when x is less than 0, it is 0. That is all this side. When x is bigger than 0, that is on this side, that is on this side, uh, the, the value of x takes this exponential form, hence the name exponential distribution. So it is 1 minus e to the minus x over beta or beta. Uh, so that is the functional form. So if you take the derivative of f of x, you will get little f of x. This is the probability density function. So I take the derivative of that, uh, I would get uh, 1 over beta e to the power negative x over beta. This is if x is greater than or equal to 0, it is 0 otherwise. So all I did is I took the derivative, Okay, I took the first derivative of uppercase f of x. So this is my PDF, probability density function. All right. So if you plot the graph of the PDF, you will get the following. If you plot the graph of the PDF, this is critical. Little f of x, the PDF itself will look like so. It will asymptotically go towards 0. So this value uh, is 1 over beta. All right. If you take if you take this equation and plug in x equals 0, then e to the power 0 is 1 and you get 1 over beta and this is the equation. So now if I want to compute the probability that x is in between two values a and b, okay, so the way I would do that is it is essentially the area under this curve. So this area, this area is integral from a to b little f of x times dx and that is nothing but the probability that the random variable takes a value between a and b. Now you could also compute that as so. You could also compute that as uh, the, the probability that x is less than or equal to b minus the probability that x is less than or equal to a. Okay, it's the same thing, right? The probability that between a and b, a and b, is a probability that is less than b minus a probability that is less than a will give you the probability that it's between a and b. So you could have as well have taken two values, a and b, on this graph and then written it like this. So this, that would have also worked for you. Okay, you, whichever way you'd like to compute, you can compute. Now. There are three things I want to talk about. We will derive them in the next lecture, but I want to say a little bit because we have the graph here. Okay? The first thing is the mean as said here is beta, so that we know. I have not told you how to compute it or why it is beta, we will see that later. Now the median, so the median is this. The median is not terribly hard to show, 
uh, if you think about it, to compute the median, probability that x is less than or equal to median okay, equals half. So that means 1 minus e to the minus x over beta is 0 0.5. That means 0 0.5 equals e to the minus uh, median over beta. Now, if you use that and take the logarithm to the base e, which is a natural logarithm, you get this result because uh, you would get natural log of 0 0.5 with a negative sign outside is log 2 multiplied by beta. So, that is the median. So, this guy is the median and the mode is 0 because that is the value that has the highest mass. So, that is where uh, the mode, that is why the mode is 0. So, notice that this is a very special distribution where the mean and the median and the mode are all three different numbers. Okay? This is uh, something that is useful. Now, another thing that I do want to say, sorry this page is getting really crammed, uh, is this point. Okay? Is that it is useful to check the properties we saw on the previous page. That is, these two properties towards the end that I mark with a star. Okay? So, it is important uh, to verify those properties with a star. Okay? And I am not going to do that here, but I would recommend, highly recommend, especially if you have never seen this topic, highly recommend that you go check that those topics, I am sorry, those uh, uh, properties are actually satisfied. Okay? So, make sure that you check that uh, the first and the second results are all valid. Okay. Now, before I go to the normal distribution, uh, what I want to do is I want to do a little demo. Okay? So, let us, uh, I am going to move to the software called Octave. Okay? So, I am going to use a software called Octave. Though if you have used MATLAB, this is basically MATLAB, uh, which is available for free uh, for, uh, for anyone to use. So, so I decided to use that uh, particular software. I want to go over the program. Uh, so, based, like I said, and I am going to make this available to you all. So, this code essentially generates exponential random variables and then it plots a histogram. That is what this one does. Okay? What we need to do is first we need to load a package called statistics. Obviously, we are going to do some statistical analysis. So, you have to do that. That is the first command. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about generating exponential random variables, you want to type that. So, the reason I put all this, the reason these appear in green is because I put them inside a percentage sign. So, all this does not get read by the program. This is just for comments for you all. Now, what we want to do is we want to generate samples from an exponential distribution with parameter beta. That is what we want to do. And uh, in this case, I am picking beta equals 10. I okay? am writing b equals 10. b means beta. Beta equals 10. And what I do is I generate 10,000 samples from an exponential distribution with parameter beta, that is this beta. And 1 means 1 row, 10,000 means 10,000 columns. That is what I am going to generate. Okay? Then what we will do is we will draw the uh, histogram. Okay? We will draw the histogram. And the reason I wrote fig 1 is because we are going to do two things. We are going to both draw the histogram as well as the PDF a little later. So, so that is why I want to call something as figure 1 and then histogram is histogram of x. So, so what it does is it takes the values of x and then it computes the histogram. Now, I am going to also display a few of the values and I will tell you later why it is crucial for you to do this exercise. And then I will also plot the PDF. Okay? So, this one plots the PDF of various values of b. Okay? Uh, I am sorry, various values of the exponential random variable. So, and then I plot the PDF. Okay, so let's run this. So I go to the command window, and if you see the name of this file, is called expon underscore comp. Okay, so that means exponential computation. So I do e x p o n underscore c o m p. I hit enter. It draws two figures, and I'm going to make them a little bit big so that you can see them clearly. The figure on the left is randomly generated values. Okay, the figure is we have generated random numbers, 10,000 of them, and then drew a histogram. Okay, Octave necessarily puts down 10 bins, and in each bin it tells you how many there are. Okay, so, in the first bin between say 0 and 10, uh, it has a little over 6,000. 6, 6,000 out of the 10,000 are small. Like I said, there are many small values, and as the numbers become larger, you get fewer and fewer. So, if you plot the histogram, this is roughly how it looks like. 
Now, notice that the PDF looks exactly like the histogram. Now, this is not a surprise. Now, all distributions have this property. So, when you have data, so when you're taking data, historical data, and then you plot the histogram, and the histogram looks like this, what you would do is say, oh, perhaps this one would fit an exponential distribution. So that's, that's the reason I wanted to show this graph is because you look at this and say, aha, this exponential distribution, if I were to sample from an exponential distribution, I get my histogram like this. So when I reverse engineer, so that I have data that looks like this, when I plot the histogram, I can say, oh, maybe my uh, population is exponentially distributed. So that would be a good guess, okay? Now, I do want to also do the other thing that I was that I showed you. I do x of 1 to 100. So let's see how the first 100 numbers look like. I know this is a little bit small on the screen and you can't see it very well. But notice that there are some really tiny numbers like 0.42 and there are some real some somewhat large numbers like 38, okay? Remember the average is 10. Okay, so remember the beta was 10. So on average it is 10, but you see numbers much larger than 10 and much smaller than 10. So if you look around, you see some numbers like 20, you see 33, 15, and some small numbers 0.5 uh, and 0.3, uh, 0.14, and so on. So there are some small numbers, there are some large numbers. One of the things to remember is exponential has a large amount of variability. Okay, uh, and if, if you have not done something like this, I would recommend trying out. Uh, the exponential distribution by generating these numbers and get a feel for how the numbers look like. And so notice that when you look at the picture, uh, you know there are some large and small ones. So what I just did is this: I wrote x of one to one hundred. It tells me the first one hundred values. I could write any of any other number as well, and it tells me you you can notice how uh, varying the numbers are. So now let's continue with where we left off. So we were here. Uh, looking at the exponential distribution. The next distribution that we are interested is the, uh, the normal distribution. This is probably the most popular statistical, uh, I mean especially in statistics, statistical distribution uh, called the normal distribution. So this is the famed bell curve. Okay? So we, we see this. this is the bell curve that we see above is the probability mass function. This f of x is not very clear at f of x and this is x. If you the plot of f of x versus x looks like this. Now, if you notice the the top point is where the mean is so the mean is 4 this one has a mu equals 4 another thing that is important is that the standard deviation is 1 so this this distance is 1 so this is sigma so this is 1 that's your sigma so how do i know what's the standard deviation well the standard deviation is where the is, is occurs at the points of inflection this is where the figure goes from going like this to like this. So it changes from convex to concave. Uh, so the point where that happens is called the point of inflection and that happens at a distance sigma from the mean. Okay? So it's a, it happens at a distance sigma from the, from the mean. So coming back, a continuous random variable x is normally distributed with two parameters mu and sigma. This is most popularly used for, uh, for normal, so typically mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. Okay? For, for that to be true, the probability density function should look like this. So f of x is given by this, which is 1 over square root of 2 pi, the whole time sigma, e to the power minus half of x minus mu over sigma, the whole quantity squared. So uh, this is a, a very well-known bell curve. Uh, we will see a lot of the normal distribution throughout this course. Okay? Now the nice feature about the normal distribution is that the median, the mean, and the mode are all equal to mu. Okay, so that's because the highest probability, the mode, happens at the same value mu. We know it's a mean; it's symmetric about this. So if you put a little mirror here, what you see on the right is a reflection of what's on the left. Since it's symmetric, it's also the median, and it also happens to be the mean. Now the sigma guy is the standard deviation. Now, unfortunately, the uh, CDF, f of x, this is the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to little x, that quantity cannot be written in closed form. Okay? So that means I cannot write a formula. I can only write it as an integral. Uh, we will be computing this in two ways. One is using a software. That is what we all do these days. But you can also use a table. 
Okay, and that's what most books use because some of the books were written many years ago when uh, software was not as prevalent. So I will try and touch both styles. Okay, all right. In particular, the tables are for standard normal random variables. So all tables, all uh, uh, all or all books provide what's called the standard normal table okay uh, so to do that what we do is we perform a transformation we subtract mu from x and divide it by sigma what it lets us do is if you subtract mu then the mean of this so the expected value of the mean of z becomes 0 z i mean and the standard deviation becomes equal to 1 okay we will see those topics later because we've not talked about the properties of mean and standard deviation so we'll get to that later so it turns out that z is a very special normal random variable where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 we like that because now for this guy we can provide a table so if you look at any textbook there'll be tables for what's called the standard normal random variable this z is called the standard normal so there are many software like this octave that we will see very soon will actually compute uh, the probability that x is less than or equal to uh, b. So uh, and like I said earlier historically this was computed using the z table and I'm going to show you both uh, using octave okay so I'm going to go back and use octave. So now I'm using the second program this is called norm underscore comp. So this program is to generate like we did before we did exponential before now we're going to generate normal random variables we'll plot the histogram just like we did for exponential and then we will compute the cumulative distribution function and then we will also compute the probabilities that I, I talked about I said we'll use it later so now what I decided was to present everything together. So the first step is I cleared everything now this is a fairly decent practice I would recommend putting clear because sometimes what will happen is you get variables that you define earlier might creep in right now and mess you up okay again we need to load the statistics package uh, again if you want to learn more about the normal random variable type up help norm R and D so you can go here and then type H E L P help N O R M R N D and then hit enter it will give you a little help menu of the normal random variable okay so it will do that for you all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate some samples from a normal distribution so octave will using the statistical package will generate that for me I'm going to pick mu as 8 and sigma as 2 and I'm going to ask it to generate 10,000 samples in one row and I'm going to ask it to uh, use mean of mu m and standard deviation of s again we're going to have two figures the first figure is going to uh, let us I'm going to try to close the other two figures so that we don't get confused which figures we're talking about okay good I'm going to compute the uh, pdf and I'm also going to uh, draw the I mean I'm histogram okay so histogram here pdf here then once we have time I'm going to do the last one towards the end is to compute the probability I'll come to that later so first let's do that so like I said the title of this is called norm underscore comp so I type here n o r m underscore c o m p and I hit enter and it computes it draws me two graphs and, I, and I'm going to blow it up a little bit okay so this is my normal so notice again how the normal random variable uh, the pdf of the normal looks a lot like uh, so here you go so this is a pdf of the normal looks a lot like the histogram we collected so we collected samples plot of the histogram it looks like this it looks a lot like the normal now if you generated another 10,000 it might look slightly different from this but overall it has this the shape okay so whenever you see a shape like kind of like this you know kind of looking like your pdf the bell curve you'd say well okay maybe we should fit a normal distribution all right so that's uh, that's what i want to say about normal so you can play with this and try different values of uh, mu and sigma if you like i also recommend you know just even trying the same program multiple times will give you different uh, so if you did this in the second time it will give you a different uh, set of uh, different figure possibly okay 
when the right figure of course should always be the same, the left one could be slightly different. Okay? Uh, so, so that is something to think about. Now, if you look at this prob, now this is one thing I do, I do want to talk about. This gives me the probability. So, now if I want to compute the probability that the random variable is between A and B, then what I do is I say, okay, what's, uh, I'm picking A as 7, B as 10, and I compute the probability that X is between A and B by computing the CDF at B minus the CDF at A. Now, this is exactly what we had in the formula before, and I did my computations, and it gives me that the probability is equal to 0.53281. Okay? So, if I go here, and I'm going to hit view, um, so this computation at the very end is basically what we did in that. So we said, what's the probability that x is between 7 and 10? And we computed it as f of 10 minus f of 7. Instead, I could have alternatively, we'll see this later in the course, I could have alternatively computed by converting it into the z. Uh, random variable, which is also normal with mean 0 and standard deviation 1, and then use the table to compute these. I could have done that as well. Uh, however, we decided to just use a software per se, but I would recommend that you know if you have a table and don't have a software with you to go ahead and make this transformation. Uh, we will, when we do deal with normal random variables, we will visit this in the future. Thank you.